The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Soft Touch. It is 11 a.m. on a Sunday in August, 1949. A blue sedan comes to a stop in front of a ranch house 30 miles from the town of Salt Flats, Texas. Come on, kids. This is Grandma's house. Shh, Bill. Bill, huh? let them sleep. We started so early, they're tired. Well, we can't leave them in the car. <laughs> if we wake them up now, they'll never finish their naps. We'll bring them in in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. Getting up at 4 a.m. was kind of early, even for them, huh? <laughs> Hey, look. Pa's painted the windmill. Mm. Oh, Bill, I love this place. I wish we didn't live so far away. Yeah. We don't get here often enough. Hey, wonder where the folks are. They usually stand in the middle of the road waiting for us when they know we're bringing the kids for a visit. And the door's open. Your mother's probably in the kitchen cooking enough food for a dozen. Yeah. Don't smell anything cooking. Ma? Pa? You home? Maybe there's still a church bell. No, they're always back by 10 o'clock. The garage door was closed, too. Pa always leaves it open when he's got the car out. Oh, then they must be in back someplace. Yeah. Hey, Ma? Pa, where are you? I've never known your mother to be any place but in the kitchen, Bill. Yeah, but she doesn't hear so well anymore. Let's take a look. All right. Ma? Hmm. Nobody here, Judy. Bill... Bill, what's that spilled on the floor at the door to the pantry? Huh? Hey, Judy, it looks like blood. Oh, Bill. <gasps> Ma! Pa! Oh, good Lord. Ma! It's dead! Oh, Bill. Bill, honey, come away. Come away. <laughs> brutal murder of the rancher and his wife was reported. Texas Ranger Jace Pearson was notified by shortwave radio. He reached the ranch house less than one hour after the bodies were discovered. I'm sorry to have to ask questions at a time like this, Mr. Ross. It's all right. My, my kids are asleep in the car, though. Mind if my wife takes them into town? I won't leave you here, Bill. Please, honey, I'll be all right. I don't want the kids to come in here even know about this. Might be best, ma'am. I'll, I'll meet you at the hotel later. All right, honey. Better tell me anything you know, Mr. Ross. Yeah. Well, we drove out from Fort Worth this morning. That's my home now. I'm a commercial artist. This is the first time we've been here in five months. Hello, Sheriff. Howdy, Ranger. Your wife told us to come right in, Bill. I sure am sorry. Yeah, it's, it's... Might have known something was wrong when I didn't see your folks at services this morning. They never did miss. You better go on with what you were telling me, Mr. Ross. With nothing else to tell. Judy noticed the blood in the kitchen by, by the pantry door. Okay. Better take a look at him, Sheriff. All right. Uh, just one thing more, Mr. Ross. Your parents have any enemies you know of? No. Jed and Martha Ross never made an enemy in their whole lives, Ranger. Say... 
You don't you don't want me to go in there with you, do you? No, it won't be necessary. Just take it easy. Kitchen's here. They took a pretty cruel beating, Ranger. Yeah. No sign of a weapon, though. Here, help me move the old man's body a little, will you? Right. Get easy here. There. Hmm. A lot of heavy welts, but beaten to death and then put in here. Blood comes mostly from hemorrhaging, though, not so much from cuts. You'd think a weapon would have cut him up more than that. Unless it was wrapped in something. Only one other thing I can think of. Bare fists. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's this? Let me see. Well, just a little hunk of paper. Yeah, crumpled, too. Piece of a larger sheet. The rest of it must have been torn away. It feels like a good grade of letterhead paper. Mean anything to you? Well, if we find the rest of the paper this came from, no. But if we don't, it could mean plenty. Like what? Well, the way this is crumpled might have been part of something the old man was hanging on to and somebody tried to get it away from him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send this into our lab at Austin. Looks like this happened sometime last night. That's something we'll know when we get an autopsy report. <laughs> Call to have the bodies and the piece of paper picked up. Then we checked around the outside of the house. The gravel road wouldn't hold a car track. But behind the house, we found marks where a horse had been tied. I got charcoal out of the trailer, and the sheriff got a horse from the ranch barn. He went right toward the southeast quarter. Ross has 200 acres and cotton down there. Yeah, I see it. Might have ridden over there yesterday on one of his own horses. No. The horse that made this trail wasn't one of Ross's. The pony we're following has a spread hoof. Whoa. Look. See the marks? Mm. There's a bar across the frog on the right forefoot. Yeah. Wondered why you were checking the shoes on the horses back there in the barn. Yeah, that's why. Who owns the adjoining place? Other side of the cotton. Big Chuck Whitaker. Now let's get moving. I want to have a talk with this Big Chuck Whitaker. Come on, Charlie. Hey, yeah. Here, boy. Yeah, I was over there yesterday afternoon, but I didn't kill nobody. Well, that's very interesting, Mr. Whitaker, because we didn't tell you anything about anybody being killed. I know you didn't, Ranger. My phone happens to be on the same party line as the Ross Ranch. I heard their son, Bill, call when he found him this morning. You make a habit of listening in? I had a call to make. I picked up the phone and I heard. Couldn't help it. Now, if you're through asking questions, I'd like to go back to mend this harness. That can wait, Chuck. You're not exactly broken up about losing your neighbors. Ranger, I got troubles enough of my own. Why did you go to Ross's yesterday? What time were you there? In the evening, just before sundown. Ross was fixing to have some crop dusting done again. I wanted to talk to him about it. How about doing the job for him? No, Ranger, the crop dusting plane comes down from Salt Flats. Oh. Well, go ahead, Whitaker. Yeah, the last time Ross dusted a spray he carried over on my place. Some of my cattle watered down near that cotton. Made them sick. Yeah, Ross say he'd watch out for it? Yeah. And that was all? That was all. Then I come home. All right, Whitaker. Come on, Sheriff. Go right. along, Chuck. Yeah. Easy, boy. Here. <clears throat> Here. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Minute. Whoa, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Yeah, I just saw to something. When I left Ross's place just before dark, a car drove up as I came around the house. Well, who was in it? Man, that's all I know. You didn't see his face? No. Only thing that makes me think of it was something I noticed. Car wasn't from around here. Well, how do you know? Well, it had one of them fancy frames around the license place. You know the things that mean that. Got the name of the town stamped on it? Did you notice the stamp? Yeah. Car was from San Antonio. San Antonio, huh? Thanks. Yeah. Let's go, Sheriff. Get up, Chuck. Help, help, help. Good thing he noticed that car and remembered it. Might be a big help. Yeah. Might be a big lie, too. That man's hard. He just acts hard, Ranger. Kind of sour since his wife ran off with one of his cow hands a few years back. But he don't need no harm. Maybe not. He makes a bad impression. He's liable to send more flowers to Ross' funeral than most anybody around. 
I've known killers to do that before, too. We checked other ranchers in the area, but we didn't get any information until next morning at the sheriff's office. Morning, Jase. Heard anything from your headquarters yet? No, nope. waiting for him to call me now. And what's that, the autopsy report? Yeah. Medical examiner seems to agree with your idea. Death might have been caused by a beating with fists. Hmm. Pretty thorough job of beating. Did you read this? Yeah. Old woman died of a broken neck. Struck right at the base of the brain. Rabbit punch. Yeah. Old man Ross hemorrhaged to death, like you said. Broken jaw, broken nose, ribs smashed in under the heart. Vessels ruptured from being beaten on the kidneys and in the solar plexus. I'd like to get my hands on anybody who'd do that. If you did get your hands on him, you'd have your hands full. Whoever did it was big, and he could hit. Plenty hard and in just the right spots. You still got Chuck Whitaker on your mind? Only because he fits the bill in a few ways. Never hurt nobody before. No, but he's a bitter man. That kind can... Excuse me. Hello? Yes, he's here. Here. For you, Jace. Captain Stinson calling long distance. Thanks. Hello, Cap. Hello, Jace. Just got a report on the scrap of paper you sent in. Special type. The paper stock indicates the original sheet was a letterhead printed in the government printing office at Washington. You know which bureau? No, but we're checking. I'll try and find out if any department there has had any correspondence with Jed Ross recently. That's what we're doing. But don't expect anything in a hurry. I won't. Bye, Jase. Bye, Captain. You find out where the paper come from? Yeah, some government office in Washington. You been checking on that car from San Antonio? One Whitaker told us about? Mm. Yeah. Nobody I found saw it. How about you? Nobody. Seems like the only one did see it was Chuck Whitaker. I hate to admit it, Jace, but it's beginning to look that way. Let's get our horses. I want to see Whitaker again. When you've known a man all your life, you hate to think he's a murderer. On the other hand, you hate to see a neighbor get killed, too. Whitaker's telling the truth. He's got nothing to worry about. I feel mighty sorry for young Bill Ross. He was all busted up at the funeral parlor. Tough for him to take it alone, but he made his wife and kids go back to Fort Worth. He the only child? Bill? Yeah. Only one living, that is. Had a sister, Joan. Nice a girl as you'll ever see. What happened to her? She was a Navy nurse. Got killed in the Solomon Islands during the war. Ross has sure had that share of trouble, all right. Kind of trouble somebody ought to pay for. Hey, look. There's Whitaker now on a pony coming toward us. Just rode out of the gully. Yeah. Get up, Chuck. Hey, boy. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, oh. You're coming back to see me, huh? That's right, Whitaker. You think I've been lying to you, don't you, Ranger? I'll take it easy, Chuck. Get one thing straight, Whitaker. I got nothing against you or any man, not personally. But I do intend to find the man who killed your neighbors. Well, then you can stop looking around my place. Sheriff, I rode out to meet you because your office called. You're both wanted back in town. Why? Because I ain't blind and I ain't lying. One of the sheriff's deputies has found somebody else who saw that car from San Antonio. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. And now we continue with tonight's case, Soft Touch. We went back to town and from there to a roadside cafe about 15 miles out the state highway. Yeah, I sure did see the car, like I told the deputy. It had that thingamajig on the license plate. Noticed it when I gave him some gas. Are you sure it was on Saturday, huh? Well, sure was. About five o'clock, I'd say. I guess there's not much traffic from San Antonio comes through here, does it, Sheriff? Nope, we're off the main U.S. highways. Anybody coming down here on a state road would have to have some business around here someplace. You remember the man in the car? No, I sure do. After I give him the gas, he'd come in for some coffee. Mm, can you describe him? 
Oh, well, three days ago, but he's better than six feet, maybe 200 pounds. Then, of course, there was his face. What was wrong with it? Well, Sheriff, his face looked like he tried to bulldog a steer on rocky ground and lost it. Sure was scarred up. He bleeding any place? Oh, no, Ranger. I didn't mean fresh scarred. Reckon he's looked that way for a long time. And when he left here, he drive on toward Salt Flats? He sure did. Wasn't nobody else in here when he stopped and or when he left, so I didn't have nothing much to do, and I was watching when he drove off. Well, he was going in the direction of the Ross Ranch, all right? Yeah, but who was he? That's what I'm going to find out if I can. Uh, Bill Ross said he's a commercial artist, didn't he? Yeah, why? Because I want to bring him out here, get a detailed description of that face, and see if Ross can draw something that comes close to it. We sent for Bill Ross, but before he joined us at the sheriff's office, something else turned up. A long-distance call from Captain Stinson. We found out what that letter from Washington might have been, Jase. Good, Captain. Let's have it. Well, it might have been from the Veterans Administration. Answer to a letter Jed Ross wrote asking if they had any record of a United States Marine named Herbert Walsh. What else? Well, for some reason, Ross wanted to know if there really had been a Herbert Walsh in the Corps, and especially if he'd been wounded and hospitalized in the Solomon Islands. The piece of paper you sent in might have come from the answer the Vets Administration sent to Ross. What was the answer? There's no record of a Herbert Walsh, Jace. Does it fit anything? I don't know, Captain. But the Ross has lost a daughter in the Solomons, a Navy nurse. Uh, Bill Ross just came in with the sheriff. I'll get on it. Bye. Bye, Jace. Uh, Ross, hmm? does the name Herbert Walsh ring a bell with you? Uh, yes. Yes, Ranger, it does. My father told me about him in a letter two months ago. You know who he is? No, I never saw him. Folks wrote that he stopped by the ranch and told him my sister had taken care of him in Solomon's before she got killed. Is that all? No. According to my father's letter, Walsh gave my folks the idea that, well, that he and my sister had been very close. Had your sister ever mentioned him in letters to your folks when she was overseas? Well, they couldn't remember, but we were awful fond of my kid sister, Ranger. Anybody who'd known her would have found an open door with my folks. Somebody found one, all right. Too open. What do you mean? There isn't any Herbert Walsh. What? But my pa gave him some money. When? Did he write to you about that? No, but I've just been going over my father's affairs. In the past two months, he loaned Walsh several hundred dollars. I have the canceled checks. Where are the checks? At the lawyer's office on the corner. I want to see where those checks were cashed. Come on. Jace, you figure this Walsh is a phony working the old war buddy racket? Of course he is, but with a new angle, a dead girl. What do you mean? I mean that families of servicemen and women open their hearts too easily to strangers they think might have been close to somebody they loved. You mean Walsh killed my family? Your father must have suspected him. He wrote to Washington and found out Walsh had never been in the Solomons or the Marines. And when Walsh came the last time, your father called his hand with a letter he'd gotten from the VA. Here's the building where the lawyer is. <laughs> Here are the checks, Ranger. Four of them, total of $600. Hmm. Endorsed by Walsh. Cashed for him by merchants in San Antonio. That car came from San Antonio, Jace. That sure fits. It sure does. Let's get out to that cafe and get that sketch drawn up. like that around the eyes. There was, uh, marks around the eyebrows. Uh, she means scar tissue. Oh. See, eyes deeper set then. Hmm. Like this? Yeah. Yeah, sure would. Ah, uh, the nose didn't come out so far. It had a, a kind of a dent in the middle. Oh. Get out. Yeah. Like that? Hey, that's fine. That's real good. If somebody knew the man, would they recognize him from that? They sure would. That's almost a spitting image, I'd say. Thanks a lot, ma'am. You're sure welcome. I'll take that, Bill. Thanks again. Uh-huh. Come back. Well, you ain't the prettiest fellow I ever saw. I don't know. My folks said that, too. But Walsh told him he'd been in a Jap prison camp and treated bad. Walsh was lying. If Walsh is his real name... 
Must have got beat up someplace, Jace. Yeah, and I've got a hunch I know where. Who do you think? In a prize ring. The man who killed your folks was a professional fighter. You figure that just because of his face? And one other thing. Don't forget that autopsy report, Sheriff. That's right. Well, you were marked right then that the fellow who threw those punches knew what he was doing. I'd sure like to get my hands on him. Two old people and getting at them through my kid's sister. Don't think about your own revenge. The law will take care of that. Yeah. But no law can bring them back to life. Uh, drop you at the office, Bill. You and the sheriff. I, I'll be in touch with you later. Where are you going, Jase? Out of your territory. San Antonio. All right, come on, Chris. Throw that one too fast. Faster. Come on, roll with it. That's it. Oh, now, let me see, Ranger. Now, well, I've seen that face before, sure. Oh, yeah. Well, been some time, but he used to train here, all right. Heavyweight. Wait a minute. Hey, Pop, come here. Yeah. Oh, come here, Mike. Pop is the world's oldest fight fan. Knows every fighter in his record for the past 50 years. Maybe he can tell you something. Yeah. You know, what can I do for you? You know a man who looks like this? Yeah, i seen him before. His name Walsh? Walsh, nothing. That's Eddie Pola. Yeah, never did amount to anything. Had a punch like a bull ox, but no science. Wide open for a left hook. Had 31 fights and ended yeah, up... Yeah, fine, Pop. Hold the whole huh? range. You don't care about all that. Huh. The main thing I want to know is, when did you see him last? Oh, six, seven years ago. Well, that long ago? Oh, ain't long enough to suit me. Pola never should have been allowed in the ring. He wasn't the kind of fighter that loved the sport. He, he liked to hit men to ruin them, that's what. And you have no idea where I might find him? Well, not me, Pop. No. Well, thanks for your help. Yeah, you're welcome, stranger. Why, sure. Glad to help, Ranger. Hey, hey. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Ranger. Yeah? I, uh, I just remembered. There was a gal Polo used to hang out with. Name was, uh, uh, Dolly. Uh, D Dolly Richards. Uh, she might uh, know where he is. Well, you know where I might find her? Well, she used to work in the box office of the Empire Theater. Uh, that's all I know. Thanks. I'll try it. Uh, you uh, planning to arrest Eddie Polder? That's my plan, all right. Why? Well, don't surprise me none, you understand, but uh, let me give you some advice. Go ahead. Watch yourself in the clinches if you find him, Ranger. He's tough with nine miles on paved road. He's bad medicine. And he won't be fighting by the rule books if he knows you want him. Thanks, Pop. I'll be careful. Yeah, being careful ain't enough. Get off first. Remember, he's a sucker for a left hook. If he gets a chance to hit you good, he won't stop till he kills you. I checked the Empire Theater for Pola's girl, Dolly Richards, but she hadn't been seen for years. I put through a call to headquarters asking them to check auto registration for one in Pola's name. It was late afternoon when Captain Stinson got back to me by phone. The car he was using must have been stolen, Jase. There's nothing registered in that name. You checking for a criminal record on him? Yeah, but there's nothing in this state. We're checking with other states, though. I just sent teletypes off. I'll have to wait a while, then. Nothing else you can do, Jase. So long. Hey, uh, wait a minute, Captain. What? Uh, take one more crack at the license bureau in Austin. See if they have a car registered to Dolly Richards. Dolly Richards? Well, who's she, Jace? Paula's girlfriend? She was. Let's hope the torch is still burning. I didn't move from the phone until the captain called back. This time he had something. Here it is, Jace. Car registered to Dolly Richards. Texas license T49753. Her address is RFD number four on Farm Highway 73. It's a turnoff north of Tilden. Well, that doesn't sound right to me, Captain. The car I want had San Antonio marked on the license plate frame. That's still all right, Jace. Dolly Richards bought the car six months ago from a San Antonio dealer. Frame might have been on there. That's better. Any out-of-state record on Pola? Not yet. You want to wait another hour or so? No. You can give me word by short wave. I'm heading toward Tilden. KTXA to Unit 10. Unit 10. Go ahead, KTXA. Report on subject Eddie Pola. Served three years Leavenworth, impersonating Army officer and using mails to defraud. One year Oklahoma State Penitentiary for fraud. 
One year, Louisiana, assault. 10-4, unit 10, clear. KDX, Austin. I took the turnoff north of Tilden, headed for the sprawling country ribbon by Farm Highway 73. It was midnight when my headlights picked out the mailbox and the name D. Richard. I left the car on the road and slipped up to the house. It was dark. I knocked. All right, Eddie, all right. Don't blow your top. What a tired kitty. Paula isn't home, huh? Paula? I don't know anybody with that name. You can save the static, lady. Where was he last Saturday night? He was right here with me. During the late afternoon and evening? You heard her, Ranger. Oh, Eddie, I, I didn't know you was in. He knocked, and I thought you'd forgot your key. All right, again, so... Dolly, shut up. Like we said, Ranger, I was here last Saturday. I know somebody who says you weren't. Described you well enough for this to be drawn. Good likeness, too, Pola. I was here. What are you going to prove with a drawing? I'm not going to prove anything with a drawing. But I'm going to have an eyewitness prove that you were near Salt Flat Saturday when Jed and Martha Ross were murdered. Murdered? Shut up, Dolly. Forget to tell her about that part of it, eh, Pola? Maybe you forgot to tell her about the checks to Herbert Walsh, the Marine the VA never heard of. Where's that letter you ripped out of the old man's hand? All right, Ranger, I'll show you. Come in. Yeah, it's over here and... The old boy at San Antonio Jim told me you were open for a left hook, Pola. I don't try that again. Get on your feet and turn around. You too, miss. Why me? So I can cuff you together. What are you taking me for? For harboring a murderer. To give you a chance to decide whether you want to stick to your story or tell the truth. All right, move. Dolly Richards turned state's evidence against Eddie Pola. Pola was tried, convicted, and sentenced to death in the electric chair. Here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. Many years ago, a group of Texas Rangers had a showdown battle with a notorious band of killers. Several days later, the Rangers assigned to the case staggered back to their headquarters, showing the marks of combat, many of them badly wounded. The captain of the company, too impatient to wait for a written report, went to the barracks where the men were cleaning up and tending to their wounds. What happened, the captain asked. There was silence for a moment as the Rangers looked up at him. Finally, one of them said... Oh, nothing much, Cap. We had a little shooting match, and they lost. Good night, folks. See you again same time next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Saddle Trend. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Paul Fries, Mike Barrett, Tom Tully, Bill Johnstone, Byron Kane, and Virginia Gregg. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. The chimes are really excited about a big show. In fact, it's the big show. An hour and a half every Sunday with Tallulah Bankhead as Fem C. And starring Jimmy Durante, Fred Allen, Jack Carson, Groucho Marx, Jose Ferrer, Meredith Wilson, and many, many more. All this and Tallulah too. No wonder it's the big show. The premiere date is Sunday, November 5th, just one week from today. Bill Harris reminding you that next it's Theater Guild on NBC.